Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hi there guys, how are you doing? This is your friend and tutor Manas and today we'll be continuing with our discussion on plane trusses. So let's see what this problem has in store. Here we go. It goes like this. A truss is loaded and supported as shown in the figure. Find the actual forces in the members CE, CG and FG. So these are the three members CE, CG and FG in which the actual forces are to be found out. Now for that we need to apply method of sections. But before that, uh, we'll try to find the reaction at suppose at A and at P. At A, we have sort of a hinged support and hinge two forces, one vertical while the other horizontal. Similarly, at point B, we have a roller support and hence there is going to be one single vertical reaction in the name of RP. Now, we have these three equations of equilibrium that we're going to apply. So let's kick off with this very famous one, summation of moments about a specific point, let's say, a is point A, we're going to take moment about point A, okay, equal to zero. Now, if you watch carefully, this 1000 Newton force is passing through point A and hence its moment is going to be zero. So, the forces that we are left with is this 2000, 1000 and this RV. If you watch carefully, this 2000 Newton force produces a clockwise moment at A, hence a negative sign. This is going to be 2000 multiplied by this AD is going to be the perpendicular distance. Why? Let me show you why. Okay. Now guys, watch carefully. Um, if I can just drop a line from point D. Okay. This is the line I'm talking about. And if you watch carefully, this angle over here is obviously going to be equal to 90. Okay. This is 90. This is 30. 120. So 180 minus 120 is obviously going to be 60. Now, you can clearly see that this is a straight line. Okay. In which this much angle is 30. This is 60. Then obviously this angle over here is obviously going to be equal to how much 90 degrees and hence you can say if this is the 2000 newton force then this ad automatically qualifies as the perpendicular distance all right so we essentially need to find the value of uh, ad how can that be done let me show you all right so in triangle aft okay af is the hypotenuse whose value is one so if this is one this is 30 degrees then this distance over here is obviously 1 cos 30 so we need to write 1 cos 30 done now let's worry about this 1000 newton force this also produces a clockwise moment at a hence a negative sign again 1000 um, multiplied by if this is the force this ac automatically qualifies as the perpendicular distance okay this AC is a part of triangle ABC, in which these two angles are already known to us. This is 30, this is 60. Then obviously this angle is 90 degrees, and hence this is a right angle triangle, and you can and you have all the freedom to go ahead and apply trigonometry. Again, in triangle ACG, this AG is the hypotenuse whose value is 2. Okay, this hypotenuse 2 meters is making an angle of 30 degrees with this base over here, and hence this distance is obviously going to be equal to 2 cos 30 right so this is 2 cos 30 what else so we've got this rb okay producing an anti-clockwise moment hence a positive sign multiplied by this perpendicular distance in the form of ab so ab's value is 1 plus 1 plus 1 that's 3 so rb into 3 is nothing but 3 times of rb all of this stuff is going to be equal to 0 now you just need to do this calculation and the value of RB shall work out as 1154.7 Newtons. That's it. All right. Fine. Now let's go ahead and let's apply the second equation of equilibrium in the form of what do you call summation of F of Y is equal to zero. All right. For that, what I need to do is I need to resolve these three forces into horizontal and vertical components. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is the 1000 Newton force and this is going to be the component over here. Okay, this is going to be 1000 cos 30 over here. We have 1000 sine 30. Similarly, 2000 Newton force is going to have two components in this way and this 1000 Newton force, it's also going to have two components, something of this sort. All right, so watch next. Now you can watch very carefully. We have to work out the forces which are acting along this y direction. So essentially, we have to deal with five forces, Y, A and R, B, 
are heading upwards and hinge positive so let me just write over here by a plus rb now these three forces 1000 cos 30 2000 cos 30 and 1000 cos 30 all of them uh, have been directed downwards okay so essentially we need to write over here minus 1000 cos 30 minus again this is going to be 2000 cos 30 minus 1000 cos 30 all of this stuff is going to be equal to zero and you already know the value of rb okay don't you yeah 1154.7.7 this is 0.7 okay so you just need to put the value of rb is equal to this much over here and you will ultimately get the value of ya is equal to 2309.4 newtons so that's the value of uh, this ya force at point a now we'll go ahead and we'll try to find xa for that um, i'm going to be using this third one summation of all the forces in x direction is equal to zero well how can this be used if you watch carefully this xa is heading towards the left hand side hence negative negative of xa and these three forces 1000 sin 30 2000 sin 30 and 1000 sin 30 all of them are heading right hand side direction and hence positive so 1000 sin 30 plus 2000 sin 30 and plus again 1000 sine 30 all of this stuff is going to be equal to zero you just need to solve this equation and you will eventually get the value of xa is equal to 2000 newtons that's it now let, let me go ahead and let me highlight this okay now that the reactions at supports have been calculated we'll go ahead and we'll be applying the method of sections for that um, I'll be making a section passing through these three members. Okay, so here we go That's it. Now. Let's have the axial forces approaching this section from the left hand side and from the right hand side And this is member CE hence F of CE Similarly, this is CG member F of CG and this is FG member and hence the actual force in that is going to be what you call F of FG now we have three unknown actual forces and for finding them finding their values we need three equations of equilibrium okay so i'm going to start off by using the first equation of equilibrium in the form of what you call the moment equation so let's take the moment about a specific point what point that has to be decided all right now if i take moment about point c what happens okay now since point c is towards the left of the section forces towards the right of the section that means these green colored forces and this rp are to be considered all right so what happens is this is the rhs portion okay let me write this now when you take moment about point c this f of ce and f of cg both of them are passing through this point c hence their moments become automatically equal to zero therefore you can say that we are left with only one unknown axial force in the name of f of fg Okay, which actually produces a clockwise moment. This green colored F of Fg produces a clockwise moment at point C. Okay, so we're taking moment about point C equal to zero. So negative of F of Fg multiplied by this is going to be the perpendicular distance. All right, let me, let me show that once again. This is the perpendicular dropped. That's it. So this is the force and this is the perpendicular dropped. Okay. So what, what we need to do is we need to write this. Let me show you what, what exactly I was trying to say is this. If you watch this triangle, triangle C, um, let's say that this point is represented by point P. Triangle CPG, this is 60 degrees. Okay, so what I can write is tan 60 is equal to perpendicular. That means the side in front, this is CP. CP is something that we don't know. CP over what? PG, simply. So this PG is nothing but 0 0.5 meters. All right. Now this is going to be 0 0.5. And from here, you can actually find the value of CP is equal to 0 0.5 tan 60. All right. So you need to put this value of CP over here. So, okay. So let's go ahead and do that 0 0.5 times of tan 60. All right. So what's next? Now guys, if you watch carefully, this RB force produces an anti-clockwise moment at point C. Hence a positive sign. Name of the force is RB. And if this is the force, let me let me make this 
um, into some sort of a line. This is the line of action of force RB. This is going to be the perpendicular dropped. Okay, if you watch carefully, this distance is equal to how much? This is this much. All right. So this is half, and this is one. One plus half is one point five. Obviously. So what I need to write over here is this is the RB force, and this is the perpendicular distance, right? Something of this sort, which is equal to how much? One point five. That's it. So I'll write one point five over here. Now, guys, you need to just solve this equation. You already know the value of RB. RB is equal to how much? One one five four point seven, and you'll eventually get the value of F of FG is equal to two thousand newtons. Okay, it's positive, and hence you can make a judgment and say and conclude rather that this member FG, this FG member, is under tension. Simple. Now. Uh, one equation of equilibrium has been applied. We'll go ahead and we'll apply the second equation of equilibrium. That summation of f of x is equal to zero. All right. How can this be applied? Um, for that, some construction has to be carried out. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need all the forces acting in the x direction. Now this f of f g is acting in the x direction. We are considering this portion, the R H S portion. All right. Now since the moment equation was framed, they're considering the right hand side portion. All right. Therefore, the f of x and f of y equations are also to be framed, taking this right hand side portion into consideration. That's it. That's the whole idea. And you can clearly see that this force and this force, these two forces are sort of inclined. Okay, so they have to be resolved into components. Uh, let me show you how that can be done. Um, simply this way, and we're gonna have a vertical this way. Now watch carefully. This line. We see where the mouse is hovering. This line and this line, both of them are absolutely parallel. This is the transversal. This angle is 30, and therefore this angle is also going to be 30. If this is 30, this is going to be one component of f of c, which we can name as f of c e cos 30. There you go. And one more component in the vertical direction is going to be this one. This is what you call f of c e. Sine thirty. Simple. Um, the next thing to do is to resolve this f of cg into components. So this force at an angle of sixty degrees with this horizontal is going to have one component over here, and this is what you call f of uh, cg cos sixty, and it's going to have one more component in this vertical sort of a way. This way, okay. This is going to be f of cg sine 60. All right. Now, so let's work out all the forces acting in the x direction. So starting off with this green colored force that you see, that is f of fg heading towards the left hand side, hence negative. So negative of f of fg, again, what's left? f of cg cos 60. Again, minus of f of cg cos 60 what else is there we have got f of c cos 30 again a negative sign f of c e cos 30 is there anything else left now in this right hand side portion of this section all the horizontal forces have been taken into account okay nothing is left and hence all of this is going to be equal to zero so i can write this again in this form let me do this uh, it's going to be equal to f of c e cos 30 okay plus f of cg cos 60 is going to be equal to negative of f of fg f of fg is how much 2000 so it's going to be equal to negative of um, 2000 newton so let's say this is our equation number one now we need one more equation for finding the value of the remaining two unknowns that is f of c and f of cg okay so what we need to do is we need to frame the second equation in the form of what you call summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to zero okay so if you watch carefully guys we are considering the right hand side portion this f of c sin 30 and this f of cg sin 60 headed upwards and hence positive so it's going to be f of ce sin 30 plus f of cg sin 60 anything else um we have got this rp also okay headed upwards and hence positive so plus rb okay now you can rewrite this again f of ce 
sin 30 plus f of cg sin 60 is equal to negative of rb all right so what's rb it's equal to 1154.7 so negative of 1154.7 and let's say this is our equation number two so here we have it two equations and we have two unknowns in the form of f of c e and f of c g so this is basically a linear equation in two variable problem it's pretty easy uh, put this up into a calculator and you'll eventually get the value of uh, these two forces as f of c e is equal to and f of c g is equal to let me show you what these values are minus 2 3 0 9.4 newton simply the negative sign is indicating that this member c e uh, where is it the c member is under compression that's it and the, in this member cg where is it the cg member okay the amount of actual force worked out as zero newtons all right now when you try to make this calculation uh, it may say that the final value is somewhere around 0 0.0009 but if you try to approximate that to two decimal places or zero decimal places it's going to be equal to zero newtons now let me go ahead and let me highlight this um, this way so guys that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubts or queries do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of mechanics then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel and also recommend this channel to your friends and classmates so that all of them can benefit. I'll be back again with some more videos on mechanics. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep learning.